everybody thinks that um, doing this sound equipment and all this live stream and stuff I do that it's just you just learn about it uh, it's just extraneous trial and error anybody can do it you just keep trying stuff until something works and then you go with that and you memorize that and if anybody touches it you get very upset about it <laughs> Well, uh, <laughs> some sometimes uh, sometimes it's it's a bigger he sometimes it's just a bigger headache than it needs to be. But you know, as long as as long as we're reaching somebody, it's worth it's worth the uh, the pain and the put on, I guess. Um. All right. Uh. So last week we talked about the um, out of context. We did part two, and we're going to shift away from that because I said that it might happen that just that way. And we may go back to it. I haven't uh, haven't officially des decided yet, but I think I found something that's going to keep us occupied at least for the rest of the year, um, and maybe the rest of next year too. Depends on how long we keep our our boots planted. Uh, but I, you know, I've never myself, and I have read a fair bit of them, but I've never myself done a study all the way through the book of Psalms um, and never in this classroom I think have, I think we've been in and out of the Psalms at times but you know and, and, and there's two men gentlemen here that I know have both preached and taught out of the book of Psalms but to go from 1 to 150 is an undertaking especially when you get you know yeah, 119 is is its own level of undertaking <laughs> Um, it is a very long book. It is a very, um, it's a book that, though, you know, it, we have to, you have to remember when you read the Psalms that you're, that you're basically, uh, reading the hymnal of, um, of the Jewish people. You're reading the, um, you're reading. I mean, it's inspired. I'd say it's a little bit, little bit higher up on the rungs than uh, than than our hymnal, uh, <laughs> uh, as far as inspirational goes. But it, you're 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 reading. Uh, you know, uh, songs come from when you're writing music. When you're when you're looking at music, songs come from a place of emotion. Songs come from uh, events that are happening in your life. They they uh, they sh they shape the music. They shape the words you're speaking. And a lot of these are just prayers and so, and there's. I, when I was look when I was looking up information for this stuff on online for this class, I did find find a place that had a pretty good breakdown of the entirety of the book. The first first chapter through the forty first chapter are mostly Psalms of David. Now that's not a, all of them, and, and 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 when we throw these things into these categories, that's there's always caveats. Um, the they're mostly Psalms of David, his life, his faith, his prayers to God, some dark moments, some happier moments, some brighter moments, and the first two chapters being introductions to the book, and that's actually what we're going to look at today. Um, then chapters 42 through 72 are more historical Psalms. Uh, they're uh, prayers of lamentation and distress and have a lot of historical facts about Israel in those uh, uh, those uh, thirty some odd psalms, and then seventy three through eighty nine are um, a darker and bleaker set of psalms. They've got, they, I mean, they're they're pretty sad actually, with rays of hope throughout. And then you have the pre captivity, uh, uh, basically a collection of pre captivity songs that run from ninety to one hundred six. Um, uh, Talks about the long-standing faithfulness of God. Moses's um, psalm that he wrote is in that chapter. So these are, and when I say pre-captivity, that's pre-Babylonian and Assyrian captivity. Um, and then you have post-captivity and re and return psalms that are from 107 to 150, and they're the final declarations of goodness 
of the goodness of God and ending with five psalms that are that are just hallelujahs generally and and I don't know if we're going to get to all of it we may only get through one section we may we may only get through this class we may all be gone before next week um, but uh, we are going to uh, my hope is to look at all of these uh, as far as we can yes sister Donna um, th- those are those are psalms that are written either in captivity, or and, and or post their return, um, and are generally about the long the the long standing faith and goodness of God, and then it ends. Those last five psalms are a lot of a lot of hallelujahs. Um, so Psalms chapter 1, verse 1, I don't think we're going to read or teach about anything that is unfamiliar to anybody here, but an introduction is always important. Finding out what we're, what we're talking about, what the theme of a book is about, what a, um, where we're going from here can be largely found um, in these two chapters. So, uh, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. The opening two verses of, of this chapter um, posit a, a, a fairly simple um, idea, but one that I think that is easy, easy for us to fall away from, and that is the, uh, the man of God the person of God, the one that wants to be blessed. It's, it does say blessed is the man, but in saying blessed is the man, there is there is a question that way. If you do this, you will be blessed. Uh, there, There's an inference to be made there. Um, that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, i.e. you don't take advice from lost people. Nor standeth in the way of the sinners nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. You're not finding your place among among the ungodly. You're not finding your seat. And then it goes on and says, but his delight is in the law of the, of the Lord. And I, you know, delight is not a word that is used very often in the scriptures. Um, but this specific spa- uh, place, I looked it up and I forget the, the Hebrew word there. It is Hebrew. Um, uh, uh, but it it can mean the the most valuable thing to you. So not only do we have to find ourselves if we want to be blessed, and and I, and, and it, 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 we, I think I think a lot of religions sell blessing as a as a as an offer. If you join this religion, if you join our group, you will get these things in return. I think all of us, nobody wants to be cursed. Uh, There would be, there would be, you you would have to, you would have to be very, very far from God indeed to, to want to be cursed. Um, But we have an opportunity for blessing, but not only do we have to not follow after the way of the world, I mean, that's essentially what verse one is, 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 is stating, but we also have to be active. It's not enough to just simply be set apart. And I think that's where the fall down of a lot of people's doctrine of separation ideas go. It's not enough to just be different. It's not enough to be separate. We have to be actively seeking and it says in his delight is in the law of the Lord and in his law doth he meditate day and night. So not only to be blessed do you have to set yourself apart but you have to be active and meditative in what God has to say in what God wants you and what God wants you to do this is this is a constant uh, this is a constant uh, dwelling upon the things of God and not only does it need to be a constant because you can sit and you can constantly dwell on the scriptures and be just angry as a as a, as, as a, a cat that's had a tail stepped on um, but it's your delight. Uh, it is your. It is. It is. It is the. It is the. It is the sweet. It is the. It is. It's the candy at the end of the day, uh, uh, and the beginning of the day, and uh, throughout the day. Apparently, it's. It, it, you know, I always. Uh, 
for whatever reason, Werther's Original Candy always sticks around in my mouth uh, longer than I think it does most people. I, I can have a Werther's in my mouth for what seems like an hour before it finally goes away. Um, and I don't, maybe I don't maybe I don't have enough uh, uh, spit in my mouth to dissolve it. But uh, Werther's Original is something that hangs around. That's how it's supposed to be. They're 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 tasty. But we want to this the ever, everlasting gobstar. You know, Willie, we were talking about Willy Wonka uh, during the uh, during the break. Uh, that it, we're supposed to it's supposed to be something that's sweet, but something that hangs around with us, that sticks with us, that we delight in, that we're happy about. When we it, when we find ourselves in the scriptures, in in the meditate, we should be it, it shouldn't be a burden on us. We should be happy to be. And if you're not. That, you know, some people would say, well, that, that automatically means that you need to examine your salvation. I think that there's a place for a Christian. I, th- I think this verse offers a place that a Christian can dwell that is separate from the world but not happy in the law of God. I, I, honestly, I think the Pharisees spent a lot of their time there. Uh, they, 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 they were following after the law of God, but they weren't happy to be in it. Uh, the, 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 in fact, the misery of, 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 of fasting and things like that is what they... What they craved, because they wanted to see people miserable, uh, because they were doing it for the wrong reasons. Um, and he uh, and he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Now, verse three is the blessing. It's easy to run over it and says, "Blessed is the man," you know, and, and then just start reading through the verse. All these verses are linked up together. If we can separate ourselves, if we can not follow after sinful ways, ungodly ways, if we can find delight in the law of the Lord, what is the blessing? And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. Now, uh, this is um, these words <laughs> are often are, are used in that, that that song. I shall not be moved. I. I I've seen trees by rivers before, and rivers can take trees away. But what I think what the, what is getting across from this is not necessarily that you're not going to ever face adversity. A tree planted by the water has one resource that trees need and desire above all other things, and what is that? Water. <laughs> uh, it, so if we find ourselves in the law of God and we meditate in it and we delight in it, the resource that we need to grow as Christians is going to flow right underneath our roots. We're going to be able to drink, We're, and, and that doesn't mean that adversity is not going to come. And and I think we I think God sometimes sends us adversity. You know what? Creeks rise, <laughs> uh, waters rise, and they beat on trees, and some trees fall. Uh, at the end of the day, though, that is the lifeblood of a tree. Between that and the sunshine. It's what they live off of. It's what the, it's it's what and and it goes on and says, uh, and his leaf shall not wither. That means you're not going to die. That means that you're that that you're not going you're not going to lose um, your fullness. You're not going to have you know around here. Actually, usually about this time of year, we've had an incredibly wet summer here in Tennessee. Um, but um, around here, generally around this time of year, this is when it starts. Everything starts drying up. And we don't get a usual, uh, uh, the usual, like I think New England gets a color change around October and stuff with the trees, um, where, where, where the leaves change color. Um, ours doesn't happen naturally that way because they get plenty of water up there. Ours, usually our color change comes because the trees are so dry they can't support the leaves anymore. They wither and they fall off and they die. Uh, and it kind of usually brings an early onset fall. I remember one summer, we had a summer that was in the early part of it that was so dry it actually killed the leaves. Remember we had an early color change. Um, and that's what this is talking about here. Not only are you going to have the resource to keep yourself alive, that withering time, the time when adversity comes on you, it's not going to cause you to wither. And then the final thing is, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Now, this is, I, I think, a opportunity. You know, we, we, we oftentimes don't reward ourselves with a lot of, and I don't think we should. Our work is not for here. Our work is for above. But we just simply need to look at the life of Joseph and how he dwelt as a man. It says, whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. That's both in a spiritual capacity. I think that we can have great prosperity in a spiritual capacity, especially when we're finding ourselves meditating on this day and night. But 
I think this can uh, offer for a, for a physical capacity as well. You know, Joseph was very dedicated to God. He did everything that he could to follow the law of God as he knew it in that time. The law hadn't been written, but the, but the man served God in such a way that everything that he laid his hand on sprouted. If, if he planted a bean, it was the tallest beanstalk. If he, if it, it, when he was working in the prison, the prisoners never were so well behaved. When he was vizier over Egypt, grain poured in like a river of water. Um, everything that he did was caused to prosper. And I think this verse is actually kind of specifically calling back to that idea. If we, if we set our eyes on things above, it can be that when we do things on things below. It's going. It, it's it, things are going to go well for us. God has God has said throughout the scriptures, and He proves it in a lot of the examples that are given us from the children of Israel that He provides all the needs of His people. We never we never should have want of anything. Uh, God God knows our needs above. Uh, the ungodly are not so. Now we start a new a new topical sentence in verse four that goes against everything that is mentioned in verses 2 and 3. The ungodly are not so. That means they are not like that tree planted by the water, but are like chaff, which the wind driveth away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the day of judgment, nor the sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Now, I don't think that this has... To just be unsaved. You can be ungodly and also be saved. I'll be the first to admit there are many, many days that I go in that direction because I still have human flesh to deal with. Um, I think what he's trying to get across here, and you you could go saved and lost here. It's it's a very an easy analogy to make, but I, um, the chaff is what draw my mind. You remember in the New Testament, it talks about our works, that are, whether they're wood or hay or stubble or gold. I think that this has got a lot of the same links there. It doesn't mean that all of the works that we do are worth nothing, but the ungodly works, the ungodly's work, it's not worth anything. And when it comes right down to it, when it right, comes right down to judgment time, all that stuff's going to get burned away with fire and only the actual things that are done for Christ are going to stand. And unfortunately, I think we a lot of time we stand with maybe a few handfuls of nuggets of gold where others were giants of, of the faith stand with, 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 with towering piles because we either don't find ourselves separated or we find ourselves separated and not delighting in the law of God or somewhere in between. We're not, uh, we're, we're not where we're going to be. And he said, the, for the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous. Verse 6 leaves very little doubt on who is performing this judgment. He knows, he knows who, who's doing what's what. He is fully aware of your actions, of my actions, and the place in, uh, uh, the place in which we often find ourselves, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. You, you know, there's no gain there. There's no gain there. And then we roll into. I, I want to do chapter two as well. And we roll into chapter two. Why doth the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers counsel together against the Lord and against His anointed, saying. Let us break their bands asunder and cast their cords away from us. Now, you can almost link these two things because it starts talking about what the way of the world is like. Um, verse 1 posits a question. Why do the heathen rage and why do the people imagine a vain thing? It's referencing what they end up saying in verse 3 which is let's let's break down God's people. Let's let, let's let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us. Um, the the bands uh, and I, I don't know if that is a, a band like a, a band of soldiers uh, or a band like a you know a physical band like a like a rubber band or a band of steel or something like that. Um, but the cords I did look the, the 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 Hebrew up on that there, and it can mean a bow. Like a branch, um, it, it can also mean like literally a rope. Uh, <laughs> uh, but I think the fact of the the matter stands, and it is in this that 
um, the world does not hold your best interest at heart. The world does not want you to succeed. It is their goal, a vain goal nonetheless, as we're fixing to see in the in, in the coming verses, a vain goal nonetheless, but it is a goal that they that they that they hold very dear to themselves. A goal that they uh, that they very much desire to uh, to uh, to achieve. And it's not just the lay person. It says the kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together. There are a lot of people, I think, and, and, and election time in the United States, if you're not in the United States, is a very tumultuous time in this country, uh, I think for all sides included, because we feel like that our Americans, especially, I think feel like that they have some level of control or say-so in their government. I, I don't really think that that is an existent thing anymore. They've proven they can fake uh, voting results. I mean, I'm not saying don't go vote, but I'm saying that maybe your opinion doesn't matter quite as much as you think it does. The things are going to play out the, th the way that things are going to play out. God is going to have the Pharaoh on the throne that he so desires. And people work themselves up in such a tizzy. I do want to, before I finish this thought, I do want to read verse 4. And he that sitteth in the heavens shall laugh, the Lord shall have them in derision. We work ourselves up so much about, and, and it's, uh, Nancy Pelosi's wanting to take uh, all, all, all your Bibles and all your guns away, and, and, and the earth is falling, and, and, and you, you, you better stockpile your Bibles because they're, they're fixing to be a non thing. You know what? I don't see that happen because I have a God in heaven that sits on his throne and not only doesn't like what's going on, openly laughs at the idea of us being cast away from them, of his people being being not the rock that they're founded on. You remember, we're supposed to be built on a rock. We're not on the shifting sands that, that, that they dwell on. We don't operate on the same power level as the world. We have such a... And yes, they have the devil backing them, and the devil is a very active and strong creature. But, oh, the power that we fight alongside of that we fight in representation of. We don't need to worry about these things. You know what? If Biden, if Trump, if a monkey makes its way into office, and honestly, it feels like over the last couple of years, that's what we've got, is monkeys. Just people hollering and screaming and, and, and throwing feces all over the place and everything. It, 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 our, our government is a zoo. It doesn't matter who's up there because... We're supposed to be delighting in this and meditating in this day and night. It doesn't matter. Also, because we have a God that takes care of all of it. You know, the the the, the Pharaoh that rose up that knew not Joseph? That's a pretty bad time for the children of Israel. You know what? It wasn't many, many years later, about 80, 90 years later, Moses showed up on the scene and he gave them a very, very hard lesson in the power of God. In how in 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 how powerful he can be. Now, did they not have to go through some hard times? I'm not saying that we're not looking at hard times. I'm saying that our worry, our 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 constant hand, you know, hand wringing and fret taking is 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 a waste of your time. Your 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 political and 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 do whatever you want, but the the uh, political Facebook posts. And, and yelling and screaming, and I get it at the barbershop all the time, yelling and screaming about politics in public places, and, and all they don't do any good. You know what does do good? This right here. Communicating with the man who holds it all in his hand, like this right here, that can flick it away at a whim, that created it with, a, with, the, with his spoken word. We don't need to worry about all that other stuff. And I think we, because we are allowed to have some kind of say-so in it, uh, we allow ourselves to fret over, oh, what, what, what's it going to be? What's it going to be? It doesn't matter what it's going to be because at the end of the day, my God, the actual king, is still reigning. Let's continue. Uh, verse 5, uh, Then he shall speak with, uh, with the, unto them in his wrath, and vex them in his sore displeasure, Yet I have set my king upon my holy hill of Zion. I will declare the decree. The Lord has said unto me, Thou art my son. 
This day have I begotten thee. Ask of me, and I shall, uh, I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance, and the utmost parts of the earth for thy possession. Thou shalt break them with a rod of iron, and thou shalt dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. Now we go into some of these verses here. N not only is he going to, uh, he, say, he says, speak them, verse 5 says he'd speak to them in his wrath and vex them with the shortest presence. Their, their time is coming. You know what? Pharaoh's time showed up. Not only did he lose the economic and physical strength of his entire country, but he lost his son too. Everyone died. He lost his own life at the end. Uh, and I have set my king upon my holy hill Zion. I think from verses 6 to 9, these ring very, very, very reminiscent of Jesus' actual second return. Uh, you know, not, not, not our... Not our our, not our rapture, not our our, our, our our catching away, but of him setting his foot down and crushing the armies of the earth and coming back because it says it would, he would he would uh, in verse in verse nine thou shalt break them with a rod of iron. Revelations references Jesus ruling with a rod of iron. Uh, in in verse seven it talks about thou art my capital S in my Bible son. This day have I begotten thee, the only begotten. Son of God, uh, I think verses verses um, six uh, uh, six through nine, uh, and you could even say five. Maybe is talking about tribulation. Uh, uh, are, bring very very reminiscent of verses that you can read in in, in the book of Revelation. Uh, be wise now, therefore, O ye kings, be instructed, ye judges of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. Kiss the Son, lest he be angry. And ye perish from the way when his wrath is kindled but a little. Blessed are all they that put their trust in him. Now he, he ends this, this discord about outside pressure and says they should be warned. <laughs> and I think that is our job. They should be warned to bow humbly and fearfully. Even if, you know, the lost don't have to believe in him to fear him. I was talking to a guy, a guy at the barber shop uh, this last week about, um, and we were talking about how how the school system has gotten so rough, and 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 it's not as not as. And I said, I said, I think I think the morality in this country really descended when we started pulling God out of the public school system, because even an atheist in the time when prayer was still allowed in the school system, at least had a respect for those people. And there's no respect anymore. There's no fear. Respect is born of fear. Uh, fear of the Lord is beginning... I think Proverbs says in, the first, in its first chapter, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of all knowledge. It's And this verse is saying for all these people out here that don't fear... You need to come and fearfully bow. You don't, you don't even have to believe in Him. You don't have to be saved, but you do need to fear Him. Said, kiss the son, lest he be angry. Adulation, uh, per and, and, and perish from the way. And then the last verse, and I, I think this 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 wraps up and actually puts us in a fairly fairly good place. It's, Blessed are they that put their trust or your faith in him. We have we have a very very unique place that we can perceive all things from, and we take it for granted so much of the time. We are we are in a very 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 privileged, but we're even a more privileged position than David was at the time of the writing of this. Trusting God also went along with a lot of uh, sacrifices and uh, the need for uh, for keeping for law keeping. I mean, look at Brother Junior's uh, lesson this morning. What price did David have to pay for his sin? David repented himself to the Lord, but that was not enough. What was enough? It had to be blood. It had, it had to be a price paid. Somebody had to pay a price. And that is the story of the law. How much better are we that when we can say, when we put our trust in Him, that means that we've believed in faith and, and, and the rest of it's took care of. Now, does that excuse us from what we looked at the very beginning of the first chapter? I don't think it excuses us from uh, uh, from from not living uh, in in a in a in a correct manner, from not trying to follow him. But for all intents and purposes, your your debt is paid. 
what and what a privileged position we 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 gain from that, but also places us in a position of responsibility. And I think Christians, by and large, especially here here in this country, we 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 shed our responsibility. We're we're that will be somebody else's job. I'm busy. Whatever I've got going on is more important. That's somebody else's job. All right, are there any questions about Psalms 1 or 2? I know it's probably fairly simple stuff that you've read 119 times, uh, but hopefully we've gained some learning or some understanding from it. If there's any, if there's not anything else, um, I guess we will uh, be dismissed. Y'all have a good rest of the week. Thank you.